Two Broke Rednecks present Sid Davis Productions, the hallmark of parental terror. Jazz piano is dangerous. To put a cherry on top of the spear fest. And full-time transvestite. I'm on a call from a very worried mother whose daughter is missing. Her daughter's name is Judy Miller. Judy enjoyed babysitting, but there weren't enough jobs among the people she knew, so she decided to advertise at the supermarket for extra work. In hindsight, claiming to have firm melons was a bad idea. Late the following afternoon, the phone rang. 1-800-SLUTTY-GIRLS, Judy Judy speaking. The man told her he and his wife were going out to dinner and that their regulars could he pick her up in 15 minutes. Judy's mother hadn't returned when it was time to go, so she left the message. Why is it always the guy with the bow tie? When her mother came home, she found Judy's note and called the number to let Judy know she was home in case she wanted anything. She also ordered a pizza and made some prank calls. but she didn't know anything about Judy and told Mrs. Miller she must have the wrong number. She also told her she didn't have Prince Albert in the can and wasn't going to fall for it. Oh, that Tommy Lee Jones is so hot. By midnight, Mrs. Miller was really worried. She phoned the police and was transferred to juvenile. I took the necessary information and assured her we'd do everything we could. Then hung up and laughed hysterically. The waiting lasted almost a week. Then the report came in. Judy's body had been found on a lonely desert road. Did any of these people watch Stranger Danger? The most difficult part of my job is bringing bad news to parents. Which is why I deliver it in an interpreted dance. You can never find the right words to tell a mother her daughter has been murdered. But doing it as a comedy routine doesn't help. Careless about whom she'd trusted. In itself, there'd been nothing wrong about advertising for a job, but it led her to trusting a person she knew nothing about. A mentally sick person who used her innocent ad as an introduction. And now that I've convinced you that the mentally ill are killers, my job is done. Being safe is often no more than applying good judgment in everyday life. One night while Barbara was babysitting, the doorbell rang. She didn't open the door, but called and asked who it was. She knew it was a bad idea to give him any information that she was alone, but she did it anyway. But she told him she was babysitting and expecting a call from her parents. However, she was sure the next door neighbors were home and perhaps he could use their phone. He then kicked the door in and shot her to we glitter like Rip Taylor. She was polite and helpful, but she hadn't taken any chances. And when her father called, she was safe. Lousy movie, this Star Wars stuff will never be a hit. Friday night was movie time for Sally and Elizabeth. Their parents alternated weeks. We're the double met twins and we're here to win. Friendships are easily made in a crowded theater and when two older boys struck up a conversation and moved next to them, they were secretly pleased. A publicly disgusting. So that's a small popcorn and a small soda. That will be $452.37. If they could take the girls home, she was all for it. 
She asked Elizabeth to call her folks and tell them that they could... Oh, please, I like creepy men. Elizabeth was tempted, but decided it wouldn't be right. And Sally was disappointed. When the show was over and they were leaving, the boys suggested that if Elizabeth couldn't go with them, why didn't Sally come? Sally thought it was a good Gee, that's a swell idea, and they can both show you their right face. Elizabeth didn't like the idea, but Sally insisted. So, Elizabeth left alone. Not any of the boys she went with had Could this music get any more foreboding? When they drove right past her house, she became concerned. Oh, now she's concerned. And not like, I don't know, when she met these creeps. When they arrived at Lookout Peak, she was frightened. She tried to convince herself there was nothing to worry about, but when they parked off the road, she knew she had gotten herself into something she couldn't handle. It's an unholy menage a trois. At midnight, her parents became alarmed and called the Nelsons. Yes, Elizabeth was home. Hadn't they picked up Sally? No, over an hour ago. Well, of course she could talk to Elizabeth. Between guilty tears, Elizabeth told what had happened. And how Sally had stole all the cookies from the cookie jar. Sally had been found, dazedly walking down the road from Lookout Peak. It was a night they'll long remember. In fact, Sally may never be able to forget it. Especially the beating from Officer all Studley. All seemingly innocent places can turn out to be just where wrong associations are made. Uh, that piece of stuff will never catch you. Robert frequented the malt shop in his spare time, which was considerable, as he'd finished high school and didn't work. In other words, he he's a bomb. ...company of younger teenagers because he wasn't accepted by those of his own age group. Now there was a fly in my drink, just like the sign guaranteed. Mary had seen Robert before and thought he was very good looking, so she was naturally flattered when he singled her out and struck up a friendly conversation. She thought it was odd he vaguely resembled the ginger on Scrubs. When he offered her a ride home, she was only too happy to accept. That's a right vehicle I've ever saw one. They drove around for a while and talked. Mary was a good listener, and Bob enjoyed nothing more than talking about himself. And for some reason kept saying how big he was. Mary knew her mother would be upset if she came home with an older boy, so Bob dropped her at the corner. Sadly, it was the corner her mom was working. After that, they saw a good deal of each other. At first, Bob was willing to see her at the malt shop, but as time went on, he became jealous of her friends and insisted on... To the rape truck! Lavender and Daisy May visit the big city. ...places and their relationship became more intimate. Mary knew things were getting out of hand because Bob became more and more demanding, but not wishing to lose his friendship or the prestige she enjoyed from her friends for having an older boyfriend, she complied with his desire. In other words, they made hot monkey love! Then Mary found she was in trouble and had to tell her parents. Trouble hell, she's knocked up. ...and Mary had to be taken out of school and placed under the guidance of juvenile authorities. Yeah. She didn't have an aunt they could send her off to? ...an unusual one. Too many young girls are flattered by the attention of older boys and don't realize until too late that these boys, who cannot compete in their own age group, are often not well-adjusted and will demand too much in a relationship with a younger girl. That's why our parents arranged a marriage to this guy. ...young people into trouble. Trying to move too quickly into a world of grown-ups with a young person's faith often cause heartache. 
It's a heartache, nothing but a heartache. Jay Park Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.